are my helper, you are my keeper, my restorer, my life giver. Hey, you are the living God, Lord. Come on, sing it. Hey, you are the living God. Hey, yes, hey, one. Listen, you pick me from the mountain, set my feet up on the rock. Hey, you are my promoter, you are my defender. Come on, you are the living God. Hey, my center. Just set my face up on the rock. You are my defender. You are my promoter. Hey, you are the living God. There is no man that has loved us, or there is no man that we ever love us, of God. We are just like you do, Lord Jesus. We bless your name. The helper to the helpless, we magnify your holy name. The pillar of our lives, we exalt you. The King of glory, we exalt you. The Prince of peace, we exalt your name. Our comforter, we magnify you. Our healer, we exalt you. Glory to your name, of God. Glory to your name, of God. You are God. We, are just we lift up your name we on give high. You our redeemer, Lord our Lord intercessor, we our mediator, be our savior. We bless, we, bless we, bless we bless your name. We bless your name. We bless your name. Thank you, Lord Jesus. We have come to worship you. We have come to lift your name up and high your God. We are not like you. We have come to adore you. Our Lord our God. Our Lord our maker. You are the one that brought the light. Thank you, Lord. Jesus. We worship you, Lord. Church, I don't want to give you thanks. Thank you, Lord. Church, I don't want to give you thanks. Thank you, Lord. 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 Thank you,
what you worship this year has been. I can tell you what you do. This year has been. Yes, you are. 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 Hallelujah. Hallelujah, Lord. Hallelujah, Lord. Glory to Jesus. We worship you. Hallelujah. We worship you. Hallelujah. In the book of 1 John 4, 4, it says, You are of God, little children, and have overcome them, because he that is in you is greater than the one that is in the world. Hallelujah. The Lord God that has kept you. Just think back how chaotic this year has been, but he has kept you. In two days, you will be in the night month. Just the way he has kept you, he will see you through this year. And know you are not you are unstoppable. No power will be able to stop you. No power will be able to limit you. Hallelujah. I just want you to go to God this hour and say, Father, I decree and declare that by your spirit in me, I shall overcome. I shall overcome. I shall whatever go. that is out there, whatever that has been this year, whatever the world may want to throw at you, you shall overcome. I want you to declare that. I want you to decree it that you will overcome by the power of God upon your life, by the Spirit of God in your life. You will overcome. You will overcome the year 2020. Whatever that may be, you will overcome. For me, you will overcome. I am a winner. I am overcome. I will overcome. I will succeed. I will overcome every obstacle in my life. Jesus, come in my way. In the name of Jesus, you have seen me through God. Myself and my children, all my family, we will overcome. To overcome Jesus, in the name of Jesus, it has only been God. It can only be God. We pray it can only be God. And He will see you through. Begin to declare. You will see. Begin to decree that you will succeed. Whatever that is in the world, God know this morning that He that is in you is greater than what is in the world. He that is in you is greater than what is in the world. I am winning. I am winning. Things are falling for me in pleasant places. In the name of Jesus, I'm going from glory to glory. I am unstoppable. In the name of Jesus. I am a hobble. I am a hobble. My children are a hobble. They will not stop. In the name of Jesus, they will not murder their children. In the name of Jesus, I will execute. In the name of Jesus, we declare our victory, O God, by your power, by your grace, by your mercy, by your spirit in us, O God, that we will overcome. We are we will overcome. We it is our decree this morning. It is our declaration this morning, God. We in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus, our testimony is full. In the name of Jesus, Hallelujah! Thank you, Lord Jesus. Oh, the book of Zechariah says, "What are you, O great mountain? Before Zerubbabel, you shall become a plain." Hallelujah! I just want you to pray and say, Father, in the name of Jesus, I command every mountain, every mountain, whatever that is representing mountain. We are not talking about physical mountain. Whatever that is limiting you. Whatever that is preventing you from your next step, from your next step of glory, from your next step of promotion, whatever that is confining you is a mountain. I want you to pray in the name of Jesus. I command every mountain standing before me, standing on my way, standing on my way to greatness, standing on my way to breakthrough, standing on my way to success. Be bow, bow right now, turn to plain. In the name of Jesus. 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 Father Lord, this morning we pray of God. Father Lord, in the name of Jesus. We command every mountain we cry unto you as a church. Every mountain is standing on our way of success. Standing on our way of breakthrough. Standing on our way of greatness. In our life. We labor. That we turn to plain in the name of Jesus. We turn to plain in the name of Jesus. As we are mountain in our spiritual life. We are spiritual mountain. We are financial mountain. We are the commons. We are winners. 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 We are
that we will see the end, the end, the end of 2020. 2020 will not see our end. As we are seeing it, we are overcoming hurdles. As we are seeing it, we are overcoming obstacles. And we declare that we will not be confirmed. That whatever limitation be broken in the name of Jesus. That whatever that's sta standing as a mountain before your children, before us this morning. Father, we command it to be leveled in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Father. Thank you for the power to overcome. Thank you, Lord Jesus. We bless Thank your name. You, Father, we commit the remaining part of the service into Amen. your hands. We commit the speaker, oh God. We commit the preacher, oh God, into Amen. your hands. Spirit of God, may you rest upon him Amen. mightily, oh God, to Amen. speak that which you want us to hear today, oh God. Amen. In the name of Jesus, I decree that your heavens be open over Amen. him, oh God, that he will speak your mind Amen. in the name of Jesus. Amen. Thank you, Abba, Father. Thank you, Jesus. Be that glorified, oh God. For in Jesus' mighty name we have prayed. Amen. Amen. Master Jesus, our God is good. Amen. The church is marching on. Hallelujah. The church is marching on, and the gate of hell cannot stop us because the Lord is with us. He that is in us is greater than he that is in the world. That is the confidence that we have that we are moving on as a church to the glory of God and the name of the Lord will be exalted. Praise he the Lord. I want to welcome you to church again this morning and I want to celebrate the goodness of God in your life, in my life, in the life of this ministry because our God is a faithful God. Amen. Many did not think that we'll be here today. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. There are many that would, when they look back and they were to project and look into to, to, today, they will not give us a chance that we'll be here. But to the glory of God and to the shame of the devil, we are moving forward stronger and more united, a body of Christ, to the glory of his holy name. Praise the Lord. It's an honor for me to stand before you this morning to proclaim the goodness of God. And I pray that the Lord that has brought us this far will not leave us halfway. Amen? Our God is a God of perfection. He starts a thing and he brings it and he does it and he brings it to a very, very, very beautiful completion. And that is the confidence that we have in him. That is the God that starts and ends well. And if we tie into that and walk with him, then we are confident that we will end well. Praise the Lord. No matter what the society says, no matter what the time says, no matter what the world throws at us, no matter what the enemy is out cooking, but one thing that we should be confident of is because our God is a perfect God. And whatever he does, he does it well. And because we are walking in his will, then we know we will end well. That should be our testimony. Praise the Lord. I just thank God for bringing us here today, and I want to welcome you for being part of this. And the Lord that has, blessed, that has brought us here will bless us, and he will encourage us, and he will give us that that we need to remain in his will, because that is where our safety resides. Praise the Lord. That is where our safety is. When we remain in the presence of this God, it will be well with us. I pray the Lord help us in Jesus' name. Let's just go to God in prayer. Let's pray. Let's pray. Our Heavenly Father, Lord, we thank you. We worship you for the time like this, O oh Lord. Even you, the master planner, the creator of heaven and earth, the Lord that made everything from nothing, the Lord that knows the end even from the beginning, O oh Lord. Father, Lord, we know that a day like this from the beginning of creation, you, the mighty Lord, had it in mind that you will bring us to your presence to bless us. Mighty Father, we have come. We have come because you ordained it. We have come because you planned it. We have come because you will it. We are not here on our own, O oh God. 
We are not here because we wanted to be here. We are here because you made it happen. Because you, oh Lord, designed it from the beginning of time. Mighty Father, even as we've come, oh Lord, we are that 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 you have for us today. The purpose for which you have set a time and a season like this, a day like this aside, to bring us to your presence. Father, we reveal and we declare, oh Lord, that that purpose will be fulfilled in the mighty name of Jesus. The word that you have for us, that that you have prepared to speak to your children, precious Father, let it come to them speedily in the mighty name of Jesus. Sweet Holy Spirit, I reduce that you may increase. Father Lord, I decrease, oh Lord, that you may increase, precious Father, that your presence will be felt among your children, that even as they have come today, Lord, they will have that unique and personal encounter with you, that they will not hear me precious father but they will hear you oh lord even as you have instructed their heart father lord we open ourselves unto you oh lord our heart oh lord we surrender unto you father we declare that we are clear you are the potter mold us to conform to your will that that you know oh lord the shape and the state that you know that if we are in it will benefit us in your presence father lord conform us to that shape and to that form in the mighty name of jesus father let your word profit us today let your word profit us. Even as we've come, oh Lord, have your way in our gathering. Sweet Holy Spirit, take over, take control. Let your perfect will be done. For in Jesus' mighty name we pray. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. In Jesus' mighty name we have prayed. Amen. God bless you and welcome again. Uh, today, by the special grace of God, we are going to be looking at a topic that I titled, by the grace of God, Don't Wait Till the Battle is Over. Shout now. Don't wait until the battle is over. Rejoice or shout for victory now. Praise the Lord. And uh, I want to celebrate our pastor for giving me the opportunity to do this. And, um, and it's an indication that uh, our God is not an author of, uh, of confusion. When I was um, doing one of my morning devotion, and I came across this. And I spent some time on it myself. And um, it really blessed my heart. So I was thinking, I said, well, this would be good for me to share with the congregation. I was thinking of maybe I would just type it out, copy it or whatever, and distribute it. I was still contemplating on how I was going to get it to everybody. I looked at my phone, and pastor said, you are ministry on Sunday. I said, wow. Glory be to God. So what an avenue. Here I am contemplating on how to get a message out, not knowing that the Lord has gone ahead to prepare an audience for his message. And when I look at things like that, that is what makes me look at this God and said, He's somebody, He's a God that must be feared. He's a God that must be reverent. Because whatever it is that you have, whatever it is that I may have, that I may be dealing with, and I would think the other person does not know, if we walk in accordance with His will. Nothing, 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 nothing take our God by surprise. Nothing happened under the sun that he's not aware of. Nothing that he does not have his finger in. Nothing that he does not control. If it is happening to you, the Lord is aware. If he let it happen to you, it's because he wants it to. Praise the Lord. Don't wait till the battle is over. Shout now. Don't wait until the battle is over. Rejoice now. Now, when we look at it, 
Sometimes we want to look at that and say, okay, what battle am I fighting? What is that war that I am in? What is that thing that is as big or as complex as a battle? Then when I look at these things, I look at, it, okay, maybe many of us, our, our mind will go to the conventional war. There are two armies, one against the other, and they are fighting. Okay, that may be considered a battle, and it may go on for some time. Where all artillery or weapons and everything is used, it could go on for an extended time. It's possible. That is a battle. But also, if we bring it home and we bring it to our personal level, if you have a contest or a struggle or a controversy that is extended over some time, it is also a battle. When I look at the definition, I say, well, yes, we all know what battles is, but how can we bring this home? And the dictionary also defines battle to mean an extended contest, struggle, or controversy. Then when I look at that, I'm like, wow. Who that has life, that is breathing, that does not have a struggle? Who is counted among the living that does not have one thing or the other that is contending with? There is not. So when we bring that home, we all have what? A battle. Then when I look further, the dictionary further defines struggle to a uh, battle to me struggle to succeed or survive. The struggle to succeed or to survive. Or further, a combat between two people. So when I look at it, I see that this battle thing that we are talking about touch everyone. Touch everyone. No matter who you are. No matter how comfortable you think you are, no matter how educated, no matter how lowly placed, and say, well, I don't have anything to worry about. No matter how young you are, a child that is learning to crawl is facing a battle. Praise the Lord. That father that is struggling to pay the bill is fighting a battle. That stay-at-home mom that said, well, all I care about is for me to cook the meal. But he's looking and he's thinking of what can I do to please my husband, to make him happy. That thought process and trying to figure it out is a battle. So when we bring this home, we'll find out that we have every reason to shout. Because at any point in time in our life, there is one battle or the other. There is one battle or the other. Sometimes I look at some people and say, what? When you say praise the Lord, they, tell, they call themselves straight shooter. They say, I tell it as it is. I call it what it is. You say praise the Lord. They say, what do I have? Especially when they are going through challenging time. What do I have to praise the Lord for? What is it that I should be excited for about? And when I look at such people, sometimes I just wonder and pray for the mercy of God for them. Because if only the Lord will open their eyes to know what is going on around them. How the enemy hand is stretched out to snatch them the next second. Beg for the grace of God. Beg for the mercies of God. So, and I bring you good news today, my brothers and my sisters. If you look at your life, you don't have to look too far. There is a battle that you won the last minute. Before you got here today, there is a battle that you won for you to be able to get here. As you're going home, there is a battle that is ahead of you. Praise the Lord. And my quest to you today is don't wait for it to be over. Don't wait for you to sit back and say, now all is done. I cannot praise this God. Shout a shout of victory now. Don't wait for the battle to be over. Shout now. And our test is taken for Second Chronicles. Second Chronicles, chapter 20, and we'll be reading verse 21 to 23. Second Chronicles 20, 
21 to 23. And I read from the New King, from King James Version. And he said, when he had consulted with the people, he appointed singer unto the Lord, that they should praise the beauty of holiness as they went out before the army and say, praise the Lord for his mercies endured forever. Verse 22. And when they began to sing and praise, the Lord sent ambushment against the children of Ammon, Moab, and Mosai, which are come against Judah. And they were smitten. Verse 23. For the children of Ammon and Moab stood against the inhabitant of Mount Sire, oddly to slay and destroy them. And when they had made an end of the inhabitant of Sire, everyone helped to destroy another. Praise the Lord. You may be seated. God bless you. Now, because the Lord laid in the heart of somebody. He was forming, he was facing a very formidable army. And by the way, the name of that king is King Jehoshaphat. Jehoshaphat. The army of, th of two nations came together to fight him. And others that the Bible referred to as Matsai, when you look at the different versions of the Bible, these are other smaller nations. Ammon, the Ammonites and the Moabites, they were great nations. Two of them came together, and the other smaller one said, we will join in the war to go and defeat this nation of Israel, the city of Judah, to go and tell them, that the God, they are always proclaiming that the Lord was with them. But we are going to tell them that our physical army is stronger than them. They came. And when the king heard of what they were planning, like any other man, he would panic. He would panic. He was disturbed. Because somebody came to him and said, nations, nations, They've gang up against you. You have no chance. They are across the sea. They are marching. They are coming. There is nothing you can do to stop it. The best thing you can do now is to put together an army that is equally strong that can contend with the army that is advancing. And for the fact that Jehoshaphat know who the Ammonites and the Moabites are, he also know the other nations that combine. To him, if one of the nations, if the Ammonites had come against me, they are strong enough for us to fight with. Not to talk of when they combine with another big and stronger nation. In addition to that, there are others that have come. So to him, the Israel stand no chance. It was a time of confusion. It was a time of what do I do? How do I go? How do, who do I run to? And if we look at our lives today, it is not uncommon for us. And if you want to be candid with yourself, if I want to be truthful to myself, there are many people that will come with you with news that will frighten you to your core. There are people that will come to you and say, well, that career you are in, it's not at this time. The economy will not work for that career at this time. That business that you are trying to do will not work at this time. If you go to two doctors, if you go to three doctors, many of them are, two of them are very likely to tell you something that will scare you about you. So if we are looking at or looking for bearers or frightening news, they are bound wherever we are. So Jehoshaphat's case was not different. He wasn't different. Even when the army were coming, there were people amongst him that were coming to him. If you look at the passage that we just read, if you look at verse 2 of it, they came to him and said, they are coming. There is nothing you can do. These two nations, these two nations, you know them. You know them. And by the way, if we take a step back, and these are the nations when the Lord was trying to settle the children of Israel in the promised land, these are the two nations that he spared. 
These are the two nations that he said, go and conquer, destroy every other nation around you. Believe these two of them. Praise the Lord. These are, if you look at it that way, they are supposed to be the ally of the children of Judah. Because their God spared them. When God gave them power to conquer all the other nations, he spared these two nations. And when I was looking at it, could it be that the God is so big and say, well, yes, they conquered the other nations around us. They felt we are too much for them. They cannot stand with us. So now it is our turn to show them who we are. Who is that? And what is that situation? That you look at and say, well, for now, I'm going to let this be. I'm going to let this be. Maybe tomorrow, he will be an ally. She will be an ally. Or this opportunity, I'm going to let it be now. Maybe tomorrow, it will be a stepping stool, something I'm going to use to get to my position. But now, it's now staring you in the face. And people are telling you, don't take it on, don't face it. It's too much, it's too great for you. Let it be. The Moabite and the Ammonite, God spared them when God gave the children of Israel the opportunity to destroy and conquer all the nations before he settled them in the promised land. But these are the two nations that have come to contend with them. To contend with them. But thank God for who he is. Thank God for being God. Thank God for seeing and knowing the plans of the enemy. And thank God for raising a king like Jehoshaphat at that, at that time. But my question to you today, before we get too far into it, is if you, if I get that kind of threatening or panicking or frightening news, what will I do? What will you do? Are we going to sit down, fold our hands like many of us will do and begin to cry, why me? Are we going to run to the corner and put on ashes all over our heads so that we might accept or attract sympathy from people? What will we do? If somebody calls you today and says, well, we are telling you dating is not the place to be because the economy in dating is not going to recover in the next 20 years. Or that business that you have invested everything in is not going to work. Because we have looked at it, people, we looked at statistics, people that go into this business for the first three years, they all fail. Even in good times. Not to talk of you that is starting it at this time. Or they look at it and say children that go to school because they are homeschooling, children that go to school at this time, they don't do well. Will it cause us to panic? Will it cause us to begin to run to places? Will it cause us to begin to get at our mom and say, okay, where is it happening? Where do I relocate to? I know that is where, what many of us would do. Maybe there may be some situation that will not warrant us to take that step. But the first thing that will come out is, how do I get out of this storm? How do I leave this place before the storm hit? But not for King Jehoshaphat. When that news came, what he did, he gathered the children of Israel. He went to the Lord. Yes, the human factor came in. The panic, he was disturbed. He questioned why. Why now? Why would God allow these people that he spared? Did God see that these people were going to arise and come against us and he spared them? When we had the grace to conquer them, why did he let us leave them? What do we do? But what happened is that fear pushed him closer to God. And the Bible recorded in verse 3 of 2 Chronicles 20 that he called the congregation. He called the children of, uh, of, of, uh, of uh, Judah. And he brought them together. He proclaimed a fast. Let's go to this God. Let's go to this God. Let's go. Let's cry to this God. We always claim that our God is all-knowing. Nothing will come to me without him knowing it. Now I am faced with that thing that he already knew was coming to me. 
But because of the flesh, instead of me running to him at that time when that situation come, I am now running to others for solution. But Jehoshaphat ran to God. He proclaimed a fast. He called on the people. He called on them to be united, to form an army, but to fast and to pray. When he called them, he didn't ask for every man, every home, bring your male child, bring the strongest amongst you. That was not his, that was not his charge to them. His charge was not, oh, you may put your house in order, get your wife prepared, we are going to go to war. That was not his charge to them. Meanwhile, don't forget, he has received report that this army, they are coming. They are not going to stop halfway. So one way or the other, he was going to face this war. What, what, would, what would the flesh do in such situation? We'll start brazing ourselves. We'll start preparing. We'll start putting our house in order. We'll start getting things that will prepare, that will prepare us. That will physically, we'll start looking at what is the strength of this army. How big are they? How many are they? How many war have they fought? How many fell to them? Who defeated them? What did those people use to do? We begin to put things together to be able to contend with this army. But not for King Jehoshaphat. That is not what he did. He called the people and he put them together and said, well, let's go before this God. Let's hold a fast. Let's seek his face. Let's hear from him. Let's receive from him what he wants us to do. And the people came together. The people came together. When I was looking at this, I look at verse 4, and what the Lord revealed to me in this, uh, there was a desire among the people to overcome. This was not just Jehoshaphat alone. When they fasted and prayed, then there was an imbue, something came from within them that yes, we are all united in this and we are what? Going to overcome. There was an agreement of purpose amongst and between them. They may be strong, but we know the God that we serve, that our God is stronger. They may be well equipped, but we know the God that we serve, that he is stronger. They may have formed an alliance, we know the God that we serve, that he is stronger. If God spared them when we had the opportunity to overrun them, then God must have saved them for another purpose of his glory. And that, this is the time for that glory of God to be revealed. The people worked together. They agreed with Jehoshaphat. There was no division in the house. There was no, oh, king, let's go make peace with them. When situations like this arise, that is when you see people that call themselves men and women of wisdom. They come to you. When that battle stare you in the face, they come to you. And they begin to profess solution. They begin to tell you, these are things you should do. These are things you should do. And many a time, those things that you should do is relying on their own knowledge and possibly relying on fleshly wisdom. Many a time, that thing that they are asking you to do is out of the will of God. Because they are looking at the battle, how strong it is. They're looking at the army that is coming towards you, and to them, they want you to escape. And they are looking for a shortcut for you. But not for the children of Judea. Not for King Jehoshaphat. They all agree, and they unite, and the power of the Lord came down on their behalf. So when I was looking at it, I was like, okay, what brought that power of God down? How come that the unity, common fasting and prayer, was able to bring the presence of the Lord down to the point that the Lord stood with them? And the Lord took me to Matthew 18, 19. When he said, when two of you shall agree concerning anything here on earth, you agree, you decree it, and you agree. And he said, anything. He didn't say when the doctor say your condition is not, cannot be helped. He didn't say when, the, when, the, when, the, when your accountant said your only way out is through bankruptcy. 
It didn't say when there is no other option for you but to leave. It said concerning when two of you shall agree concerning anything here on earth, it shall be done for them by my Father which is in heaven. The children of Judea agreed that this battle we will overcome. They agreed and the Lord gave them a seal of acceptance. And the Lord gave them the victory. Then when I bring this home, I say, well, this may be talking about a group, may be talking about a congregation, may be talking about a community, may be talking about a force that is doing things. Now, how do I bring this home? How do I bring this home? How come that many, some of these battles that we are fighting is eternal, is in the home? How come we are not overcoming? How come we are not winning? How come we are not succeeding in this thing? And the Lord took me to 1 Peter 3, 7. 1 Peter 3, verse 7. And we are going to be looking at part B and C of verse 7. And I just got that part. I said, and be heirs together of the grace of life. Now, Peter was admonishing the Christian how to relate with one another. How to relate with one another. And it was admonishing man here how to treat his wife. How to see her as a weaker vessel. After telling them how they should treat themselves, he went further to, to lay this out. That you should remember that you two are what? Hairs. What is hair? Hairs is joint ownership. You belong to this. You own this grace of life together. You own it together. It belongs to the two of you as a unit. So if something belongs to the two of us as a unit, then there is no agree agreement between me and my cohort to harness that goodness that belongs to us as a unit. If I'm going after it alone, I am wasting my time. I am wasting my time. The children of Israel did not tell you, are you go and fast and pray, you are our king. Whatever the Lord laid in your heart, you do it. We are just going to sit here until we get instruction from you. No. They came together, joined force together, fasted together, and prayed together. What is that battle that is in your house? What is that thing that you are dealing with at home? The solution, the key, is what the Lord has given you. You are joint here. He put the key in both of your hands because you are joint here. Until you decide to walk and operate the key together, it is not going to work. There must and there should be and there must be an agreement that this is what we are going to do. And when you do it, then Matthew 18, 19 will come to play for you. You do it, you agree on it, concerning it, then the Lord will approve of it. They will begin to see that the battles, things that we call battles, they are none. That even before we get there, we'll begin to shout a shout of victory. Even before the battle comes, we will shout because we know the Lord has given us victory over that situation. Unity and agreement. Unity and agreement. Disunity and disagreement and praying for breakthrough is like converting or taking what belongs to others. When you have, you are supposed to agree. You are supposed to do it together. But you are doing it alone. You are fighting the battle alone. You are seeing your ally as an enemy now. Somebody that is supposed to be walking and running beside you, you are seeing that person as an opponent. And the Lord revealed to me that is equivalent to converting the grace of God, to stealing what belongs to the other party. Because you are joint here. You are supposed to harness this goodness together. 
It's like trying to rob the other party of it. I am going to take it all so that you don't get it. Our God is a fair God. Sometimes we magnify our battle. We make it bigger, make it fiercer than it should be. By our own action and our desire of the flesh. I pray the Lord help us in Jesus' name. I say I pray the Lord help us in Jesus' name. To win or to have the Lord fight for you, there are things that you must do. There are things that you must do. One, you must be in the plan of God. For you to shout even before the battle is over. And be assured that there is joy, there is victory at the end of it. Even before you walk into the battle, there are things you must do. And one of them is being in the plans of God. As Judah was, as Judea was, if you look at verse 9 of the passage that we just read, if you look at verse 9 of 2 Chronicles chapter 20, it will tell you that Judea were in the city because Jehoshaphat went to God and said, God, you brought us here. We didn't come here on our own. We did not come here on our own. It was your leading, it was your instruction that we followed, and we are where you want us to stay. Why will you bring us to a place that you know that the enemy will overrun us? He could take God, child to God, because they were in the plans of God. They were in a place that God asked them to be. They were not only there, they honored God. The Bible said they built and maintained a sanctuary. They built a temple for God in that land. So it's not only for, it was not enough for them to say we are here now because you brought us here. They took it a step further and honored the name of the Lord and built a, a place of worship, a place of honor for God. A place they can look at and remember the name of the Lord. A place that they believe, if we go into this place and call in the name of this God, he will hear us. They honor God and they brought the presence of God to where they were. So before that battle comes, my child or my question to you is how prepared are you? How ready are you when you raise your hand and say, Father, here I am, let your will be done. Will the Lord look at you where you are, your situation, and be pleased with you and say, that is where I want you to be. If not, this is an opportunity for every one of us to look back. What is my standing? Where is my standing? Where am I with God? Where am I with God? Am I in a place that he will look at and say, well, I take pride in my son. I am glad that is where I want it. I am glad he is in my will. I am glad he is in my plan. Or is it, as I always say, my own plan that I want God to come with me on? Is it something that I have formed, I have formulated on my own, and I think I have a plan for myself, I have an exit for myself, but because it's not going right now, I remember there is a God. If that is the case, it takes the grace of God. It takes the grace of God. But it's better if we are in a situation, we look at it and say, Father, this is your plan concerning me. I knew nothing about this. You were the one that asked me to do it. Now I am in it. We agreed. It's not my plan. It's your plan. I am executing the plan that you brought before me. When we call on him, when we are in that kind of situation, the Lord will not leave nor forsake us. We have, we have to make sure that we are in the plan of the Lord. And whatever we do, the Lord's name is praised in all that concerns us. They have a place that they will run to in times of trouble. Praise the Lord. And also, they have a good account or a good record where they could go back and begin to list what they have done, how they have obeyed the Lord. Can you look at your back? Can you look at your back at your life and say, Father, I have done this. 
I have done this. I have been obedient. You called me and I did it. Now this is the time of trouble. I have nowhere to go because all along my loyalty has been to you. Or do we have a divided loyalty? Amen? No man can serve two masters. If you work for an employer or you have two employers and God forbid something happened to you, like injury or something like that. This one is going to say, talk to that one. Then the other one will say, talk to that one. Except you can prove it happened here. But if there are two of them, everybody wants to shift the blame. Amen? Employer A is going to say, oh, maybe you sustained that injury while you were with employer B. And the other one is going to put point hand at the other one. But if you are with one, if you are with one, your loyalty is to one, that employer, even if something happened, and you cannot say this is how it happened, but if they look at your record, there is no other place they can tie you to, they will accept that responsibility. If our loyalty is to God, in times of trouble, in times of crisis, when we see the war coming, when we see the army coming towards us, we can say, Father, I have no other way to go. There is nobody to run to. All I have done is yours. And the Lord being a just God, he will not leave nor forsake us. I pray the Lord help us in Jesus' name. When I was looking at this, the story of Dokas in Acts chapter 9 verse 36 came to mind. She was dead. She was dead, and they were praying for the Lord to bring her back to life. And what did they do? They begin to recount. They begin to recount the good things that he had done, that she has done. They begin to recount. She was not aware. She was not there to say, I did this, I did it. But the people she affected, the people she impacted, the question I ask myself is, what will people say about me? If I am not there and somebody is to pray that, Father, we see this war, we see this army coming to Deacon, Father, advert it, save him from me. What record will they say on my behalf? Not when I'm there. To shout for joy even before the battle, there has to be something worthy of God's intervention in your account. We have, we have, we have. There is no two way about it. Thank God for his mercy. Thank God for his grace. He will, he will intervene when he needs to. But we, why we can, why we can, have to go out of our way to make it in such a way that people will look at us and say, yes, of a truth, he was a child of God. Yes, of a truth, he did the will of God. As people recounted the good deed of Dokas, and the Lord heard their prayer. Praise the Lord. Now, when we go to, when all this thing has been said, when Jehoshaphat looked at it and looked at the, with the situation he was facing, and all this has been said, and what the Lord told him is, no, you don't need a war, you don't need an army. You don't need an army. All you need is to put together a praise team. Praise the Lord. Is to put together a praise team. He assembled praise and worshipers. Not armies now. I say, you just go and pray and pray the name of the Lord down. Let's see the hands of God. Amen? And as they were doing that, praise the Lord. As they were doing that, the enemy that had come together to form an ally against the children of Judah, what did they do? They turned on themselves. The children of Judea and, and Jerusalem were just spectators. They were watching. Oh, I thought you guys were coming to us, but these two people now, or three nations, the, the, the Ammonite and the Moabite, turned against the other nations. Oddly, according to the Bible, destroy them. When they have done, when they have done destroying them, they look at them and say, okay, who do we fight now? Now we were allies, but we are enemy of the children of Israel. As far as we are concerned, we, you, Moabite and Ammonite, we are enemies now. They turned on themselves. To the point that the children of Judea did not have 
to fight a battle. All because Jehoshaphat appointed singers and praise worshipers. They shouted for victory, call on the name of the Lord. The Bible said they sang and they worshipped and they went before the army to praise the Lord. As they were doing that, the Lord caused a confusion in the camp of the enemy. Praise the Lord. I don't know about you. That is the kind of story that I want. Why I'm praising God and celebrating the goodness of God in my house. My enemies, they are destroying themselves. Why I'm shouting glory be to God in the church of God. Those that are plotting to do me harm, they are turning on themselves. The battle is not yours. The battle is not mine. It's the Lord's. But what we need to do is we shouldn't wait to see the end of the battle. Let's energize. Let's motivate this God. Let's encourage this God. Let's tell him our hope. Our, 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 we are depending on him by praising him, by lifting up his name. When we do that, the Lord would arise on our behalf. And the enemy, the Egyptians that are coming before us, the Lord will set himself against them. That we will not need to fight the battle. If we look at the children of Israel when they were on their way to the promised land, if you look at Joshua 6.20, and the Lord asked them to march around the wall of Jericho. Don't do anything. Don't fire anything. Don't go. Don't knock the wall down. Just praise my name. And the seven times, when you, the seven day, on the seven day, on the seven march around the city, the army should shout at the sound of the trumpet. And when the trumpet sounded, there was a loud shout from the army. And the Bible recorded that the wall of Jericho collapsed. They did not use dynamite. They did not use sledgehammer. They did not use anything to break down the wall. All they did was call on the name of the Lord. The Bible says the same God yesterday, today, and forever. If he did it yesterday, he can do it today. The question is, why have we chosen to do it the hard way? Why have we chosen to do it the hard way? When there are ample evidence, there is an easy and more comfortable way to do it. All we need to do is to praise this God. If I have that colleague of mine that has sworn to be my enemy, he's not my enemy. He's not my battle. I don't have to do something to, to him or her to get him or her in trouble to prove that I, am, I can be a bigger enemy if I want to. I will praise the Lord on his or her behalf. Let the Lord fight the battle. Praise the Lord. And if you need something to encourage you, look at Deuteronomy 24. Deuteronomy chapter 20, verse 4. It says, For the Lord your God is he that goeth with you to fight for you against your enemies. And to what? To save you. He goes before you. Before you get to that battle, he's ahead of you. Why do I want to go ahead of him and say, no, you step away, the battle is mine. That is not a smart way to look at it. That is not a smart way to approach it. Don't wait for the battle to be over. Shout now. And I will say, don't wait for the battle to start. Don't even take cognizant that there is battle. Praise him all the time. Don't recognize there is battle. Live a life of a child. I don't care what is going on. When I want food, I want it. I don't know. I don't care where you are going to get it from. That is the mind of the child. 
Whether you have job, the food is ready or not, I don't care. All I want is when I want it, I want it. That should be who we should be to God. Father, I don't know how, care, how you're going to take care of this situation. All I need is I need my peace. Wherever you do it, however you do it, I don't care. I'm going to depend on you, and I'm going to continue to praise you. I don't even want to know where the trouble, where the battle is coming from. You have promised me that if I trust in you, peace you will give to me. That is all I need. That is all I care about. If we approach the Lord this way, he will stand and he will defend us. But many a time, we are taking on the battle that we don't have to. We are worrying about things that we cannot do anything about. We are beating ourselves down about something that we cannot change. We're going to do it, fight, 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 grow, uh, grow, grow gray, grow old, and wear ourselves down. But at the end, when we push it to a point that we are out of option before we realize there is a God, when that should have been our option A? When that should have been the thing that we should have done first? It's my call to you tonight or today. Let's rethink our approach. Let's rethink our strategy. Let's take this God for who he is. There is nothing that he cannot do. Let's not take from him the battle that belongs to him. Let's not put on ourselves things that we cannot do by ourselves. Because we have a friend in him. A friend that cares more than a brother. And I was looking at the hymn here that speaks to my heart when I was doing this. For some reason, as I was meditating on this, it took me to this. And I'm just going to read it out. Because to the glory of God, the Lord has not blessed me with singing. Hallelujah. I know how to make a joyful noise unto him. But when it comes to singing, that is not my thing. Hallelujah. So I'm just going to read a stanza here that speak to this. And it says, what a friend we have in Jesus. Have trials and temptation come your way? Is there trouble anywhere? We should never be discouraged. But all that we should do is to take it to the Lord in prayer. If we do that, the Lord will stand strong for us. I pray the Lord hear our prayer in Jesus' name. Let us pray. Our Heavenly Father, Lord, we thank you. We worship you for the great God that you are. Thank you, the Lord, for your word that has come forth. Father, Lord, we present ourselves unto you, precious Father, in any way that we may have taken upon ourselves things that we are not supposed to. Things, battles, wars, fight, oh Lord, concerns, worry that we are not supposed to be as precious Father. We come to the throne of grace at this time and we repent of all such precious Father. Give us, oh Lord, the grace to speak, to sing unto your glory. The grace, oh Lord, to seek you in every situation. Even as you have promised, oh Lord, that you will never leave nor forsake us. Let that promise stand with us, precious Father, that the grace to look up to you in every situation, Father, will receive now in the mighty name of Jesus. Mighty Father, continue to defend us, continue to protect us, oh Lord, and continue to give us, oh Lord, that peace that you have promised us. Father, we don't care what the world thinks. We don't care what is going on in the world. All that we know, oh Lord, that we are hidden in Christ, and Christ is in you. That is our assurance. That is our safety. Father, Lord, we declare, oh Lord, that it will be well with us, even as we go, that your name and your name alone will be exalted in our life. Thank you, precious Father, for hearing us. For in Jesus' most precious name we are prayed. Amen. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Don't worry, we are closing in a few, in a few minutes. I just want to remind us, uh, starting from next Sunday, we are going to be having uh, Sunday school. Service will still start at 10. So be encouraged. Be encouraged. Come to church. Service has started. Church has started. We'll be having Sunday school and we'll be having uh, testimonies. Amen. Um, Bible studies still remain every Friday at 6 p.m. But this coming Friday is Miracle at Midnight. So if you missed the last one, 
Make sure you are present this time. Hallelujah. This next Friday is miracle at midnight. Uh, just watch out. If the Lord, uh, the Holy Spirit directs me, there might be fasting and prayers for everyone. Otherwise, those that normally uh, do fasting and prayers will still do it. Amen. Praise God. Let's stand up as we close the service in prayers. If you have been blessed, just wave your hands to Jesus. Stretch forth your hands towards the King. Let us, let us pray for him. Let us pray for him. Stretch forth your hands towards him. Just bless him. Bless him, bless him. According to the leading of the Holy Spirit, you've been blessed this morning by the message that you heard. Just commit him into the hands of God. Father, Lord, in the mighty name of Jesus, we thank you for your son that you have used this morning to bless us. We ask our Lord and our God that you continue to empower him, enable him, O oh God, so that whenever he's called upon, O oh God, to come bless your children, there will be something, O oh God, out of him in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. As you bless him, Lord, bless every member of his family, bless his ministry. Lord, do not let him by himself, O oh God. Let your will come to pass in his life. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Thank you, everlasting Father. Thank you, King of Glory. Be thou exalted, Lord. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Just commit the week into the hands of God. Ask the Lord to bless your week. To bless your going out and your coming in. To bless everything you lay your hands upon to do this week. Ask the Lord for strength. Ask the Lord for direction. Ask the Lord for provision. Father, Lord, in the mighty name of Jesus, we thank you. We thank you, Lord, for a successful week ahead of us. We thank you for a fruitful week ahead of us. We thank you for your marvelous work upon our lives. We glorify your holy name. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, mighty Father. We bless your name, Lord. Thank you, Lord Jesus. We ask, Lord, that this week will be a glorious one to bless your name, O God. And Father, Lord, King of glory, there shall be a shout of joy from our dwellings. In the name of Jesus Christ, there shall be a shout of victory. In the mighty name of Jesus, there shall be a rejoicing in our homes. In the name of Jesus Christ, every journey we embark upon this week, Lord, shall be successful in the mighty name of Jesus. Thank you, mighty Father. Thank you. Thank you, King of glory. We worship you. We bless you, Lord. We adore you, King of glory. Be thou exalted, Lord. In Jesus' name, we have prayed. In Jesus' name, we have prayed. Father, we thank you in the name of Jesus. Thank you for your children that you brought this morning for a blessing. Thank you, Lord, for the praise, for the worship. Thank you, King of glory, for the message that came. Thank you, our Lord and our God, for your loving kindness. We thank you. Father, we commit the week into your hands, O God. This week shall be better than last week in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Father, Lord, we have started in you. Lord, in you we shall come, O God, for glory, for, for, to glorify your name, to worship and to praise you again in the mighty name of Jesus. Lord, may you provide for us this week to eat and to drink. May we not lack in the name of Jesus Christ. Help us, Lord, King of glory, grant us strength to continually praise you and worship you in the mighty name of Jesus. And Lord, at, at the end, Lord, all the glory, all the honor shall be to your holy name. In Jesus' name, we are praying. Amen. Let's share the grace and fellowship. May the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the sweet fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us now and forevermore. Amen. Surely, God's goodness and mercy shall follow us all the days of our lives, and we shall dwell in the house of the Lord forever and ever. Amen. God bless you all. Have a wonderful week. May your week be blessed. Be faithful and be blessed this week. In Jesus' name.